everyone, Ruby Ravel here, an ancient mariner attempting to sail the unseaworthy vessel of her rapidly sinking mind, here to talk to you today about Saturn retrograde. Now, Saturn is the ancient craftsman of the cosmos. He is the part of us that feels that we should build something in the short time that we have here whilst we are alive, that whilst we go on incarnating in one particular fleshy vehicle which we know is mortal and will not last forever, that with the time that we have been allotted by the fates in the universe at large, we feel that we should leave some kind of legacy, some kind of testament, that we should have built some kind of enduring structure or body of work that we can leave behind us and feel proud of, to feel that we have made our mark on the world that has been not just about us and solidifying and celebrating our own ego and potentiality, but also feeling that we have given something to the rest of the human race, that we have offered something up, that we have fulfilled our obligations to the collective at large. Saturn has a strong sense of social duty, social morality, of social responsibility and accountability. As a planet of maturity, he has an awareness that he is only here existing in this world thanks to the collective efforts, labours and struggles of the ancestors and forebears who went before him. In order for any of us to be living beings in some right who have managed to survive, we have not depended solely on our own wherewithal, but also on the actions of our ancestors, of our parents, our family, our friends, and the various organisations that are different uh, nations have built up throughout the past. All these enduring structures, whether they are social, religious, moral, educational, or what have you, the pre-existence of all of those things helps to define the person that we become, and they may have helped us and hindered us along the way. And as we grow older and begin to contemplate our own mortality, we start to consider the next generation and what teachings and moral lessons and uh, forms of experiential wisdom we can share them so we can pay it forward. So we can feel that we are giving back to others just as we received things and teachings given to us whilst we were developing. Now Saturn is famously the god of old age, and it is true that the older we become, the more Saturnine we become in our nature's considerations and worldview and outlook on the world. When we are growing up, we don't have as strong a need of Saturn as we are still in the process of building a unique sense of individuality and a unique sense of personality. And because those things are not fully formed at that age, we are permitted more latitude. We are permitted uh, the, the joy and the terror of, of exploring and self-becoming. But as things solidify and crystallize and we become more aware of who we are for who we are not, over time there develops that impetus that, okay, knowing that I am this, knowing that I value these things, knowing that I have these beliefs or this sense of calling or purpose, this is what I am going to do with my life. So whilst Jupiter gives us that, that boundless vision of all the possible things that we could do in our life to fulfill our personal sense of heroism, Saturn is the one who ultimately says, okay, I'm running out of time, I have to pick one or a few things that are actually realizable and manageable, and then close the doors to the rest unless something substantially changes that makes those things available to me in the future. And for many people, this crystallization process aligns with choosing a particular profession, a role, a vocation that we can adopt as our own in this world. In my own case, for instance, I chose to be an astrologer because out of all the different things that I've experimented and explored throughout my life, I have found spirituality, astrology, and psychology to be the gifts that kept on giving, the ones that really helped to strengthen me and enable me to make sense of the world. And because I can see how radically my own life has been improved through the 
assimilation of that knowledge, it is a strong drive for me then to want to give that knowledge back so that other people can be helped in those same areas where I struggled. But whatever we choose to do in this life, whether it's a firefighter, a policeman, a judge, attorney, a rock and roll guitarist, or an antiques dealer, Saturn is of the philosophy that we should pick something and stick to it until we have attained absolute self-mastery, until we have reached the, the pinnacle of our particular profession and achieved the rank of a grand old statesman to whom who has proven their worth and ability to the outer world and in order to achieve that self mastery we have to develop discipline self control uh experiential knowledge and wisdom and also to have strong routines and structures in place that we can consistently build upon until we have this kind of larger edifice that can eventually stand on its own without always having to be juggled and maintained, that our own hard work has built something that is concrete and undeniable and which makes future labours increasingly easier. Now, building any kind of enduring structure or attaining any kind of self-mastery or worldly success entails a lot of labour and hard work. And all labour and hard work demands a certain degree of self-denial and self-deprivation, the ability to have ingrained the concept of deferred gratification that I will do a lot of unpleasant, difficult, onerous and odious tasks now, all in the hope of reaching some kind of future benefit that will have, be worthwhile enough for me that all of the, the long hours, the fatigue, the wear and tear to my physical and mental being that I will have to, have to sustain in order to achieve this will feel that it is worth it. So with whatever Saturnine commitments we have made to becoming the best of whatever we have chosen to do with our lives, we have to feel that it's worthwhile. Otherwise, we're not going to feel, I am willing to make these sacrifices. I am willing to erode my mental and physical well-being in order to achieve these things. If you are doing engaging in backbreaking labor to achieve something you don't care very much about then that's only going to make the task even more onerous because there will be no sense of personal satisfaction that one is making sacrifices for something that will be fulfilling on a deeper level even if the fruits of those labors is is not immediate we have to believe in whatever long-term goal our saturn has committed to you know, if we want to train to be an opera composer and have to learn all of the difficult skills and go through all the difficult channels that involve attaining uh, that ability, it's only really going to be worth it if we fucking love opera. You know, if, if that is the, the greatest thing for us, the very zenith of the beauty of what humanity can produce, then it's going to be worth it. If we don't really care and we're only doing it for someone else, then the whole thing may just seem futile and pointless. But once we're caught up in that rat race, in that grind, in that conveyor belt of aspiration on all the rhythms, routines and, and structures and repetitions that have to be engaged in to, to get anywhere in life, then it can be very hard to stop. If we are climbing that Capricornian mountain and ever looking up towards the summit, there comes a point be, beyond which going back is not easy or stopping is not easy. You know, unless we've reached some kind of plateau where we can rest for a moment and consider where we've been, stopping may mean falling. And therefore, we make sure we keep going and enduring, even if we don't physically feel we are capable of doing so. And yet, when Saturn goes retrograde, as with any planet that goes retrograde, it makes the activities and qualities of that planet more introverted. So Saturn may find that he gets put on pause, whether he likes it or not, that in some way, his labours or the things in which he are, is engaged in get stopped. 
and he is forced to introspect and think more about what he is building rather than just mindlessly carrying on with whatever he has started. And sometimes that sense of being stopped, of being put on pause by the Saturn retrograde can be caused by very definite outer events like a particular job being completed or a relationship being ended or having to move from a place in which one is living Saturn retrograde usually expresses himself by some very definite boundary have been put in place saying that this particular thing which you have been working on has either been finished and you have to find something else or there is an obstacle so large that you cannot currently move it and you need to take time to rest, rethink, adjust and calibrate before you can carry on with carry on climbing whatever mountain it is you are moving upwards. But sometimes Saturn retrograde doesn't need to be manifest by any particular out events, outer events. It may be a more general sense of emotional isolation, lethargy, exhaustion and depression that he produces because those things in themselves become their own obstacles, their own boundaries. When we feel well now, when we feel depressed, when we feel lacking in purpose and motivation, then we feel like we have been placed in this womb of stone, that any of our attempts to, to move forward or make things happen, we just lack the energy or drive to actually bring them into being. And if, even if that's a very painful experience, because if we've associated so much with that Saturn saying, I am only worthwhile, I only deserve to live whilst I am producing something of lasting value, if that capacity to move forwards and to keep building and plodding along is taken from us, then it can throw our whole lives into question. It can produce this deep existential crisis where instead of just distracting ourselves with the ongoing process of building and climbing, we are forced to stop and say, what is all this about? Why am I doing this? Am I still invested in those long-term structures and goals that I've committed to? Do they still matter to me? So Saturn retrograde can be a time for really digging in deep and asking ourselves why we do what we do. At the beginning of the Sun-Saturn cycle, we may have experienced that, that enthusiasm, that, that joy, that sense of resolve and determination as we stand at the foot of the mountain and say, yes, yes, I will climb this. Getting to the top of this mountain means more to me than anything and gradually we climb it up, we meet some difficulties along the way that slow us down and, and produce us with insights that show us how hard it is and the skills we still have to master to it. get to the top, but we also experience those thrilling moments where all of our hard work seems to be flowing smoothly and, and we make greater strides and, and progress and meet with the recognition and validation out there in the world that says, yes, I am, I'm beginning to build something, I'm beginning to achieve something, I'm beginning to prove back my worth to the world. But when we reach that point where the retrograde stops us, there may be a point where we ask ourselves, why am I climbing this mountain at all? Why did I start? has all the labor and time and energy that I've sacrificed into attempting to build these things, does any of it actually matter to me? Have I reached a point where what once mattered to me on a deeply emotional, personal and soul level has simply become this thing that I am doing by rote, where I'm just going by the motions, fulfilling my function and duty and authority in the world, but without there being any real personal involvement with this. And actually taking the time to withdraw, to introspect, to, to brood and to think things through is one of the important culminations of this um, transit and yet can be something very hard for Saturn to do. You know, normally Saturn identifies with having that tough grit, with having that adulthood and that maturity that keeps on slugging on whatever the cost. 
if we think about those annoyingly Capricornian British phrases like keep calm and carry on or, you know, just uh, just get on with it, you know, don't think about it, don't intellectualize, don't idealize, don't moan, don't sulk, just be stoic and, and get on with it. And normally during direct motion, Saturn can, can, I, can be fine with that. He can say, yep. You know, life is difficult, life is a struggle, but we all have our crosses to bear, we all have our duties that we must fulfill, and so, so long as I am doing them, I can feel some kind of sense of satisfaction and integrity, some kind of sense that I am earning my keep in this world, that I am not being a sponge, that I am not being a, 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 a parasite, that I am not just sitting there, lounging away, wasting my time, idling, away the hours expecting everyone else to do something for me. No, I am taking matters into my own hands. I am being a master builder and I am using my finite amount of time uh, in a positive and productive way. But the depression and the melancholy that Saturn can feel when he goes retrograde initially can be very strong. And instead of just happily carrying on with that conveyor belt, he can instead say, well, why should I keep calm and carrying on? Why am I carrying on? Is there actually any deeper meaning or, or purpose or actual fulfillment to me carrying on? Why should I just get on with it? Who says? By, by what authority? Suddenly all of these things that we are happy just, all those annoying questions we are happy just to leave unanswered, suddenly become pressing of an absolute moment. We feel that there needs to be a deeper core, a deeper awareness of what we are doing, that there's no point just carrying on anymore unless our heart is in it. We need to dig in and go to that underworld and find out where our soul and heart and, and sense of duty and obligation resides now and whether we truly believe in those duties and obligations and responsibilities that we have taken upon ourselves. Is our energy and labor better placed elsewhere? You know, we're talking about using a finite amount of time that we have in a purposeful and productive manner, but if we're actually giving all our time to things that are just making us miserable and aren't giving us any sense of fulfillment, and where that deferred gratification just means no gratification at all ever, you know, Saturn can start to think, well, you know, when's the payoff going to be? When is any of this going to be worth it? The other reason why Saturn initially might resist asking these these difficult existential questions about what it's doing and where it's going in life and how it's using its time is because answering those questions honestly may mean that we have to make some big changes in our lives. And that's difficult with for Saturn because he likes to keep things as they are. He likes to be Atlas who's holding up the sky. He likes to be the one who's keeping everything smooth and level, who is maintaining the status quo, who is maintaining law, peace and order, who is making sure that all the different pieces are in their, their relevant places. So when we start saying, well, you know, does it does any of this law and order actually matter? Does it actually matter whether these things are here and there? Does any of what I'm doing actually matter? Do I actually want to uphold and maintain these things? Am I merely maintaining a status quo that is making me miserable and, and depressed and making my life feel futile and meaningless and purposeless? What's the point in maintaining something that is actually just sapping all of my energy and not giving anything back because it, it doesn't actually matter to me anymore. And if Saturn has to reach that point with, with something in his life and say, actually, this needs to change, that can be very difficult because if you've built a lot of structures upon a foundation that has worn out its purpose, having to say, I'm going to have to get rid of all this and, and start over in a new direction where you've already gotten so high up a particular mountainside or hill is very depressing because for a lot of people that does make them feel like they wasted time. It does make them feel that, you know, how many years that they've spent putting into one particular thing has has not really been worth it that what once was a flaming bonfire is now just ashes and now they've got to start rubbing some twigs together and, and try and start a spark where where none wants to come but you know as um, pleasant as that process of introspection is it's also not one that we should rush 
I think part of Saturn's drive just to get back on the road and, and to keep on building and to keep on aspiring and keep on attaining could sometimes make us feel impatient and restless that we have to, if we ha do have to change things, if we do have to start a different course, if we do have to implement or institute some kind of new structure, well, you know, we've decided against that, so let's just do this, just so we can keep on saying we're doing something. And this is why Saturn retrograde transits often accom are accompanied by lethargy or exhaustion or sluggishness or slowness, because if, if that driving fire and restlessness is taken away, then we won't immediately rush into something else. Saturn's saying, no, if we're gonna, if we're gonna figure this out, if we are going to potentially change and reshape our, way, our lives so that they are more meaningful to who we are now, then we've got to really think, it, think and dig in deep. We can't just put a plaster over this. We can't just say that wasn't working, so I'm just gonna try this for the sake of it, because then, you know, a year, several years, 10 years down the line, we might also reach that, that cul-de-sac where we say, this isn't getting me to where I want to go, this isn't fulfilling me, this isn't making me happy, this isn't making me feel that my life is worthwhile, I've just replaced one unfulfilling road with another. Saturn says, no, if we're going to find a new direction, a new orientation, a new commitment, then it has to be the right one. And that kind of realization and soul searching can't be rushed. You have to be like the Saturnine Piscean fisherman who lets the fish take the hook at the right time and you don't get fishes coming to you into your net if you go thrashing and flailing around and stirring up the waters. No, you sit peacefully and quietly and in quiescence and you allow things to rise of their own accord just as we do in meditation where we also sit with our feelings no matter how chaotic, unpleasant, painful or agonizing they may be and we gradually wait for those waters to still and subside until some kind of clarity comes on its own accord. You can't shout and scream for a realization or for a point of clarity and breakthrough to come. The more you do that, the more you hold it back. You have to give it the peace and the chance and the stillness to come to you by itself without being pressured. Of course, this all sounds very dramatic and not every person experiencing Saturn retrograde is going to experience that, that sudden need to uh, reorient and completely change the structure and direction of their lives. Obviously, it will depend of the houses that it is transiting in your in your zodiac and they will show the areas of your life in which you may feel the need for some restructuring and, and recalibrating and, and reorienting but for some people it simply may be a case of needing some rest needing some time apart from the status quo and the constant conveyor belt of their lives so that they can come back to them later with some kind of renewed sense of meaning and purpose that's sometimes being deprived or taken away from the usual routines and momentum of your life can help you clarify your relationship with them so that eventually you can come back to them feeling I, I am ready to start climbing the mountain again rather than forcing myself to keep going forwards even though the weather's terrible, there's no handholds and I'm fucking exhausted from what I've spent the last half a year doing. So it's worth bearing in mind Saturn does go retrograde every year for half a year, so... Now, it wasn't until I was contemplating making this video that I realized that the current transits we have of Saturn uh, retrograde in Pisces, treating the Sun in Cancer, and uh, Neptune in Pisces, also in square to, to Mercury in Gemini, were well expressed on a, on a tragic, horrific, mundane level by um, the recent news about the, the billionaire and the other people trapped in the submersible at the bottom of the uh, North Atlantic Ocean looking for the wreck of the Titanic. That is a very literal personification of how <laughs> these aspects can be experienced on a living emotional level. If we think about 
Saturn in Pisces being this captain attempting to gain mastery over the ocean and all of its hidden mysterious depths to look into the the esoteric, emotional, psychological, spiritual, mystical undercurrents that um, underlie our everyday existence, then Saturn retrograde is almost like sailing along and then suddenly finding, like the ancient mariner in that great poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, the winds that did blow and keep the sails in motion have stopped and one is becalmed on the ocean and there is no sign of land in sight and whichever way you look, everything looks the same. We feel out to sea. There is no sense of, of clarity or direction or purpose or motion or where one should go next. One instead just has to contemplate those waters and be immersed in them and be subject to the sense of helplessness and powerlessness that arises along with that feeling of being becalmed or in the case of the submarine or, or the submersible actually being in those deep ocean depths and not knowing when you will see the light of day again, if ever. So the depression of that Saturn retrograde can really be scary because the heaviness of it, that sense of being so emotionally overwhelmed and psychically flooded and, and trapped in this space of, of absolute confusion and, and directionless, can make you wonder, how will I come out the other side of this again? What will make that ship step back into motion? What will help me return to the, the surface of the sea and see the light of day again? In that moment, we have to have faith that the darkness and the confusion that we are being put through is a incubation period hoping to give birth to a better future for ourselves in that moment when we are just feeling the pain and the agony of questioning everything it might not it might be very hard to have that faith to feel that that the powerlessness and helplessness that we are enduring is going to bear fruits we have to have that saturnine capacity to take the long-term vision of things to look at our own past suffering and know that greater transformations can occur that things that are immediately painful and uh, unfortunate and harrowing can later lead on to things that truly are remarkable and fulfilling. Anyway, I'm going to stop that video there. I've <laughs> been experiencing the depression and melancholy of this and the other aspects I've mentioned very strongly, which is why I have not been making so many videos. I found that any time I sat down, tried to open my mouth, or even feel enthusiastic about astrology, which is usually my raison d'etre, the thing about which I feel most fiery and passionate, nothing was coughing, no fires were being sparked, no oceanic voyages were being embarked upon. And I felt the only way, the thing that could perhaps get um, the tide turning again in my favour was to address the astrological configurations behind that directly and hope that being honest about that might help me to move forwards. Anyway, if any of you want to talk or share with me in the comments or, or um, any of the experiences that you are going through with this retrograde, please do. I would love to hear from you. You can message me more personally at thestarsunraveled.outlook.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Astrology and Underwear, or you can support me on Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash thestarsunraveled.